What's going on everybody? Welcome back today for another video. I know it's been a little while. I've been a little bit busy at work. I'm sorry for not uploading any videos, but today I got the Jeep behind me and we're about to fix a very, very scary, kind of unsafe problem that um, I've been dealing with for a while, which is why I haven't had any content on it. It's also why I haven't been driving it much. Um, I took it out over the weekend, but it wasn't like anywhere far. Um, anyways, so we're gonna be doing a steering box today. Um, the one in here, it got really loose and it started making like a popping noise. So I adjusted it back tight, which was a kind of a big mistake. I don't really suggest adjusting your gearbox, especially if it's no good. But um, yeah, so I adjusted it tight. Now it's like binding and it's just destroyed. So I went, I bought a new box. I'm gonna be putting that in. I'll show you guys how to do that. It's not very hard. Um, I'll do a step-by-step -step for you guys. And uh, like I said, I'm sorry for the lack of videos, but you know, I've been just really, really busy. I've been working a lot. So just bear with me. You know, more videos are coming on the Subaru, on the Jeep. And also I sold my quad. It's no longer here. I sold it last night. Very, very nice kid picked it up. Um, I don't know if he subscribed to the channel or not. He said he was going to. So if you're watching, thank you for buying the quad. You know, now I can fix my Jeep. So yeah. So let me hop right into this and I'll tell you guys what to do, what's going on, and uh, we'll get it done. Hey okay, guys, so here is the 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee. The part that we're going to be replacing is right there. That's the adjuster I was talking about right up top there. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to pull the steering shaft off, which is on this end right here. It's a 13 millimeter bolt. Take the bolt out and then use a pry bar to pry the shaft out. Take the two lines off the top, which you might be able to see better in here. Well, it's a little dark, but there's two lines that are right here. I think they're 17 millimeters. You just take those off and um, that'll do everything up top here. And then, you know, down, down below in the fender well, down below in the fender well, you're gonna have four bolts that hold the box to the frame. It's gonna be that one, that one. You're gonna have to move this out of the way a little bit. And there's two bolts behind there. Uh, I'm not too sure what size those are. I think they're 17s, it could be 18s. I'll let you guys know when I get there. And then the part that's gonna be a nightmare for most of you is going to be this guy right here, this Pitman arm. These things, those Pitman arms, they hate to come off. Like if you have a cheap puller, chances are you're gonna destroy your puller. It's gonna break, it's gonna bend. I went through so many of them a couple times that I did the gearbox on this thing. This is probably like the fourth gearbox this thing's had. Um, I eat them up because of my tires. If you have a lift and big tires, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But, you know, hydro assist is kind of out of the equation right now, maybe down the road, but not right this minute. Um, the main reason I'm doing this, I need to get this thing good, and like solid, safe to drive because I do have to do some services on the Subaru. I have to do control arms on the Subaru and I have to do motor and trans mounts on the Subaru. So I need this thing good, you know, to get to work and wherever else I gotta go. And uh, yeah, so that Pitman arm is gonna be a disaster. I already know it. And <laughs> it's gonna be a disaster and I had it off not too long ago and I still know it's gonna not wanna come off. So that's gonna be fun. And it's a really big socket. You're gonna need a 33 millimeter. Um, but this, that's not the problem. The problem is actually getting the Pitman arm off the gearbox. So let me hop right into this, start removing stuff and I'll get back to you when I have most of the stuff up top here done. And then I'll show you guys what I was talking about with the lines and the steering shaft and everything. All right, guys. So as you can see, the steering box is off. <laughs> like I was saying, this right here, as you can see, I got the nut off. But getting this Pitman arm off of that shaft is an absolute disaster. Um, if you have a cheap puller, I feel very bad for you because you're not going to have fun doing it. I suggest a puller like this that clamps from the sides just so you don't bend these arms out. This is snap-on, so if I break it, it is what it is. It's going to get warrantied. I'm going to fight with this and try to get this off, but I want to go through with you guys exactly how I got this off of here. So... This is where your steering shaft goes. The bolt goes through right through that little divot right there. And um, that locks it on, you know, and then you tighten it down and clamps it on. So that's pretty simple. Just take that out. That's a 13 millimeter bolt. 
and then your lines up top. <clears throat> Let me, oh my God, this thing's heavy. Yeah, that's another thing too. This thing is no joke. It's really heavy, but you have uh, two lines, one here, one here. One's a, one's a feed, one's a return. I don't remember which ones they were. I think this is the return, but these are 18s and there is O-rings in there. I'm really hoping that that box came with new O-rings because my O-rings are flat. And if it didn't, I'm gonna have to figure something out for that. I'm gonna have to go get O-rings for it or something. But yeah, so you have those two lines, the shaft, and uh, you have four bolts, like I said, one, two, three, four. And all you're gonna do is take the two tens out down below for the washer fluid reservoir. And then there's another 10 up top right there. And that just bolts right to the side there. And this will come right out of your way. You can just wiggle it and it comes right out. If you have a cold air intake like I do, you have to remove your heat shielding. It does get in the way of getting those two lines off. And obviously remove the intake pipe. So with all that out of the way, you can get your box out. It comes through up top. You just kind of pull it up and wiggle it around and it pops right up top there. But... Yeah, so I'm going to fight with this, see if I can get that off, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, so it's off. It wasn't easy, but it's off. So the um, way that I got that off was I put the puller on. Um, I had an issue with the puller separating, like going out. So I took my impact gun. And I tightened the bolts on the side, like as tight as they would possibly go. Um, I don't really care if I screwed the puller up, like I said, it's warrantied, so I really don't care. Um, I tightened them down as tight as they would go. And then I put the impact gun on the top, like the puller, like rod that goes through the puller. Um, I tightened that down pretty much until the impact gun couldn't tighten it anymore. And then I took a hammer and I actually smacked the pitman arm and it broke it free. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So think about your Pitman arms right here and you have that circle, obviously that slides over. You can see why it was stuck. A lot of corrosion fell out of it. So they do get corroded pretty easily. I'm probably gonna put anti-seize on the next one and um, put the puller on nice and tight, you know, in the middle, on the sides, really, really tight. And then I smacked like really hard with this big, big hammer. I smacked the side like this with the pivot arm there. And then it was just, and it popped off and then I just took it right off. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up for tonight cause it is 10 o'clock at night. So I will put the new box in tomorrow sometime. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. So just really quick before I can go to bed, it did come with new O-rings. Thank goodness for that, because the old ones are not very, very good. So, yeah, that's what your new gearbox is going to look like in the back, in the package. It's, uh, I mean, it has some weight to it, but it's not crazy heavy. Um, I have the old O-ring somewhere around here, right here. So, if you can kind of see this O-ring, it's flat on one side. So... I definitely didn't want to reuse these, so it's definitely a, a plus that they included some new O-rings. This is an AutoZone gearbox. It's like a Duralast remanufactured. To be honest with you, no matter what one you get, they're going to be absolute junk. I tried Napa. I tried Advanced. I tried AutoZone. You name it. Um, honestly, the factory one is the best one that you're going to get, but the factory one is very, very expensive, so... That's why we go with these, and this is a limited lifetime warranty, so you get one replacement. So if this goes bad, I could take it out and give it back, and they'll give me a brand new one. It's a pain in the ass because you obviously have to do the job again, but it's not terrible to do. It probably took me about an hour to get the actual box out, and then the Pitman arm is a different story. That thing was a pain in the ass to do, but yeah, so it's not terrible, and um, I mean, if you guys need one, I highly suggest, you know, just picking one up from your parts store. So the easiest way to get the new box started, you know, in here, like I said, it does have some weight to it. Um, it's probably about maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 pounds ish, like around there. The easiest way to get that started is I rested it down on the frame rail because it's actually like it hangs over this way. So you can just rest it down in there. 
I didn't put the pitman armor on or anything. I'm going to do everything when it's fully bolted up. But the way I did it was I rested on the frame rail and then I wiggled it around until I can get one of those bolts started. I did like the top one. And then once I got that started, you could wiggle the box and start the rest. So I'm going to fasten these up, you know, nice and tight. Um, I put red Loctite on them. Uh, I would suggest you do the same thing just so they don't come loose. They do hold pretty much your steering to the Jeep. So it's probably a good idea to make sure they're nice and tight and not going to go anywhere. But let me get those tightened up and then we'll get the shaft back on, the lines and the uh, pitman arm and the steering. And then we'll have to put our intake back and everything. But I actually got a new power steering pump. I don't know if you guys remember one of my older, older videos. I had the uh, oil leak at the rear main seal, which I do still have, but it's not very bad. And then um, I had the leak at the bottom of this pump. So I'm just going to replace this pump. I bought one with a reservoir. So this way I don't have to put it together because I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that it just might be that this is a cheap reservoir and it's just not sealing up. So I'm going to change that out. Also, while I have the whole system drained, it just makes sense to do it and get rid of all the issues. So let me get this completely in and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all in. And then we'll uh, swap the pump out and we should be pretty good to go. So next I tightened the four bolts that I showed you in the last clip. And then I slid the steering shaft on. You're just going to have to line it up. The bolt hole goes towards the divot that I showed you guys earlier on the old gearbox. So I lined that up. I slid it right on. There was no like force or anything. This is the 13 bolt that came out of there. You know, just get it started by hand. Then I'm going to tighten that up. Um, another thing that is good to know is whenever you disconnect that shaft, you don't want your steering wheel moving because there's a clock spring in here. And if you twist it too many times, the clock spring, clock spring, sorry about that, is going to break. So a good way to do this is to grab your seatbelt, which is right here, put it around the steering wheel and just buckle it in and your wheel can't go nowhere. So that's just, you know, good for you guys to know if you're, especially if you're doing this alone, you don't want that wheel just spinning freely. So definitely strap it down. Let me get that steering shaft tightened up and then I'll show you guys next. I'll do the lines and then uh, last we'll do the pitman arm. All right. So both lines are on up top. Um, you want to make sure that these don't touch. And then there is a reason for that. The reason is if they're touching together, you're going to have noises inside your Jeep. Um, I found out the hard way. I was looking it up online and when, when, when I did it and they were touching, I was looking it up online and uh, that's what it was. So you want to make sure there's a gap. So you just hold it back while you tighten it. Same thing with that one, you know, just position it where you want the line to be. Um, I also put the washer reservoir back. Like I said, it's a 10 up top and two tens down below, right over there. One, two. And uh, yeah, so we're all done up top besides my intake and stuff, but I'm gonna leave that off because I'm also doing a pump. And I'm about to toss the pitman arm back on, the big nut, and then I'll put the uh, tie rod back in the pitman arm. Now, if you can't get your pitman arm off, you can cut this right here. They're pretty cheap to replace. I didn't wanna do that because I have one ton steering. So I don't know if you could tell how much bigger my you know, joint where the tie rod go goes is. But I didn't want to have to re-drill that because I don't have the reamer anymore and it would have just been a uh, pain, pain in the butt. But let me get the uh, pivot arm on the steering back on and then we'll run through the power steering pump replacement and we'll bleed the system. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then we'll do the first startup, first drive and everything and then uh, close this video out. So nothing can ever be easy. And this whole entire thing, thing right here is spinning. Like the nut in the bottom. I just need the line off. It's all I need off. But this wants to spin on me. So I had to pull this pulley while it's in here just to um, get at this with a wrench because the pulley blocks it. Uh, you will need a puller like, like this puller right here. This just clamps on the outside of your power steering pulley and um, pulls it off. The only thing is, is you have to be careful while pulling these things because the uh, ring is like not very strong it's kind of like a plasticky metal as you can see eh, it's probably like aluminum and i destroyed mine pretty good but that's okay because i could still use the uh i could still use the pulley it's just next time that i do a pump i'm gonna have to buy a new pulley because i'm not gonna be able to get it back off 
So you could pick a setup like this puller that I have right here. Um, you could probably get them at Harbor Freight. This one is obviously from Snap-on, like most of my stuff. Uh, well, most of the stuff I have at work. But you could definitely find these for not too much, I want to say. they. I, I can't see them being too much. But, yeah, so you're definitely going to need one of these. And um, that pulley is going to be a pain to get off. Like, it's going to be stuck on there, especially if it's never been off before. But just be patient with it. You'll get it out. And hopefully you don't have the issue that I had where that whole thing starts spinning on me. So I'm going to get that line off there. And then you have three 13 millimeter bolts. This is a uh, 5 8 line. And don't forget to take your return line off. I just have it back here. So, And you want to pan underneath because it's going to drain out. But as far as the gearbox, the gearbox is done. Everything's back on. So... Let me get the uh, three bolts off there, get the line off, and uh, we'll swap the pump out. You guys ever just, like, struggle with something so much, and then when you finally get it, it's just like, <sighs> thank God. That's how I feel right now. Because this line was a pain in my butt, man. Like, don't even get me started with it. Yours probably won't be like that, but my pump that I have on here when I got it, this fitting wasn't screwed in. So I guess it just wasn't tight enough or something, but that was a disaster to get out, but it's out. So I'm gonna remove the pump, put the new pump on and it's reverse order, hook up the lines, everything. And then I'll, I'm not really gonna show you guys that, but I'll show you guys how to bleed the system and everything when everything's back to being hooked up and we shouldn't have any more power steering leaks or anything of that, that nature. And then uh, the only thing we're gonna have is that rear main seal but I'm not worried about that right now. I don't really lose oil. It stays full. So that'll uh, deal with later. And uh, yeah, so let me get this done and I'll get the intake back on and everything. And then we'll start it up, bleed it and uh, take it for first drive. All right, so new gearbox is in, new power steering pump is in. All you're gonna have to do for this, three 13s that hold the pump to the intake. One line here, return line, fill it with fluid. The way you're gonna bleed the system is <clears throat> you're going to take the weight off the wheels. I have it supported. Obviously, you can see that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn these wheels by hand, like 20 times, 20-ish times, you know, until you stop seeing air in the reservoir. And then you can start it and still cycle the wheel a couple more times, make sure the steering is quiet. You know, um, if you guys ever heard a bad power steering pump, you know what I'm talking about, but it's like, like it makes like a whining noise. So make sure it's not doing that. And um, once you get all the air out, you know, top your fluid off to the full line on the uh, stick here. There's a hot and a cold line and the fill line is at the bottom there. So make sure it's full. And then definitely while it's running, you gotta check for leaks. Also, if you're reusing your pulley, if your pump didn't come with a pulley, make sure this is all the way on. Uh, just take an eye and look at the belt and make sure it's not like walking off or anything. Definitely check those three things and uh, you should be good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video of the power steering pump and the gearbox. There's a lot more content coming with the Jeep now that it's up and running. It's safe to drive again. I'm so happy. Um, what a difference, man. Like I, I took it for a ride. It did take a little while to bleed the system. Um, I didn't take a video of me driving it, but just take my word for it. It drives absolutely great. Um, before, I would have to like hold the wheel so tight just because it would bind so bad in the middle that it would like when you turn the wheel like this the jeep would like dart that way dart that way it was not fun to drive it and um honestly it terrified me a couple times like taking turns and stuff and then you know it just wants to go wherever it wants to go so now it feels like an absolute brand new car um if you have sticking steering or anything of that nature chances are your gearbox is no good I personally wouldn't just go ahead and adjust it. I have had success adjusting it before, but I highly suggest just replacing it. It cost me about 160 bucks for the box, 170 bucks, somewhere in that range. Depending where you go, what box you get, yours will probably be similar price. <clears throat> Eventually down the line, I would like to do like a PSC box on it. This way I just never have to replace it again, but those are very expensive and they're kind of meant for hydro assist, which isn't coming anytime soon. Maybe if I lift it more or something, I'll think about doing hydro assist, but I don't really see a need for 33 inch tires and hydro assist steering. 
but I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. We're at 286 subscribers, I believe it said last time I looked, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, some of the videos, some, some of my higher watch videos, they did start getting ads. So, you know, making progress slowly but surely, um, not in any rush, you know, if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I'm here to help you guys out. I enjoy helping you guys out. i um, giving you advice. You know, you guys learn from my mistakes that I make, you know, I might be a mechanic every day, but I still do make mistakes. There is times when that happens, even when you do this every day, but I just want to say thank you all for uh, subscribing to the channel. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe. I'll answer any questions you have I'm more than happy to, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.